Oh, Compen. Okay, do we have any other info than that? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them to stick in the comments. Okay. Um, who is this? Uh, this is, do we, do we know who, who this is? Solomon. That we're Compen? Solomon. Solomon. My Solomon? Yeah, this is my Solomon. I'll tell you what, Solomon is out there hustling, man. This guy sends me more properties to comp. I love it. He is really doing some great stuff out there. Now, not all the properties are uh, going to work, but he is uh, he's getting close to it. So there you go. I got it pulled up if you want to share the screen. Okay, guys, here we are. I'm using ttpdata.com powered by uh, PropStream. Um, we're looking at this property here. And uh, very interesting. So what I like doing off the bat, I like just getting a, a sense of where it's at uh, and, and what the neighborhood looks like. Look at this. How interesting is this? It's like this guy held on when the developer right here was like, hey, I'd like to buy your land. And he's like, nope. Nice try. You forget it. I, <laughs> I don't need to sell it to you. So he's got this great property around all of these newer built properties. Now you've got some uh, commercial here, right? Some storage, um, some, uh, uh, it looks like some sort of transport company here, um, which is interesting. That's not the best neighbor to have, but you've got like some bigger properties here. We're in Florida. So it's just, you know, they kind of throw everything together. I just kind of want to get an idea of where this is in the world. Okay. It's not like right close to the water, but it's not too far. Um, so that's good. All right. So I'm just getting an idea of, of what's going on here. Now, this property is showing that it's only 820 square feet, which I think is very interesting. Um, let me put my guy on here real quick. I want to see what this looks like. Um, 820 square feet. So I assume, so that's the neighbor or that's the, uh, looks like some sort of farm across the street. He's got his, uh, he's got his fence up. He's got his chain link, uh, up there. That's interesting. That tells me a lot about that owner. Um, here's the property here. It obviously needs some love. It needs some work. Uh, he's keeping out all the alligators. That's right. He's got some sort of storage. I don't know if this is livable space over here. Looks like it might be. It might be just storage. So there's a couple different properties there, which is interesting. Uh, he's got all these security signs. So I'm just wondering if people have broken in there, or if he's just a regular cautious person. And the reason I bring that up is because I'm trying to think psychologically what is going on with the seller before I even like really get deep into it. I want to mentally prepare. For me, I would say to myself, okay, this person is somebody that's very guarded. I'm going to have to do a lot of the talking. I'm going to have to open it up. I'm going to have to make sure that I answer and have the answers to their questions quickly, or they are going to feel like they have to build up their force field a little bit more, literally build a fence around themselves like he has here. And, um, and, and, and just know that I'm going with a, a more straightforward, direct answer their questions manner as opposed to you know, trying to get into the, how's your day? How's it going? Well, did you watch the game? What do you think? All those things, those people will shut you down, shut you down. So I'm going to be talking about the property specific. I'm going to be asking about um, what's going on with these. Go ahead, Jesse. Okay. Main house is gutted. Two properties. Historic. It's a liability. They don't want to touch the property at all. How much do they want? See if you can get that out of them. How much do they want? Now, this one is obviously, I understand why he sent it in. He's really making me work today, Mike. This one's going to make me work. I'm telling you. Woo! This is crazy. So, first of all, what I like doing here is... Um, I like going to the neighbors first, right? Because it zooms right in there. I like seeing what is that what is that area right there selling for typically. And then what I do is I look at the sale date because this goes sale dates like crazy. Uh, and then I start looking at some of these. Okay, 221, 300. We've got an agriculture. Let's, let's go um, single family only. Let's do that. Okay, that's great. Sale date. Sale date. Now he bought this at the height, Solomon. Oh man. You see that, Mike? See what he bought it for right here? This is like the height of the market. 
He bought this for 350000 Wow. So now you've got two twenty one. 300 i'm just looking for stuff that was sold recently and then it kind of you know it's in that two to three hundred range um and i'm assuming some of these are going to be much newer properties you got a 2002 91 this one's 42 this one's on a big lot so there's a lot going on here i see this one sold for three hundred thousand a couple years ago that's interesting stats that i like looking at um just because this is a unique property and i want to know what is the popularity of this area now let's go to the comp the comps as they go um we don't want condominiums right property type single family um you've got a couple here they're on way smaller lots there's only one of them and they're at 260s um and they sold uh this year okay that's decent let me look at them on the map let's see the where they're at just said the owners don't know what they want for it so i'm assuming they just kind of okay kind of get rid of it yeah <laughs> owners don't know what they want but i'm curious to see what the estimated so their estimated is 228 as their estimated loan um on this property okay and beautiful thing you can see all these things right you can see all these things it looks like they pulled out this loan um, in 2015, they actually purchased it cash in 07, but then pulled out their equity. So they've already been paid on this, Solomon. They got paid, well, not paid. They just got their money back out at 258 900 Now, with those comps being in that mid-200s, but they're on a much smaller lot and there's only one of them, um, I would say totally fixed up if this is good in this area. I would push to 350 350 is what I'd be looking at there, maybe 400, maybe at that that price point that uh, he bought it at, at the height of it. Um, but you've got two properties there. I would assume that they're probably similar condition. One's 820. I would assume the other one's about that. So it's probably about 16, 1700 square feet total, unless you tell me otherwise. Uh, but I don't know what the other property um, square footage is. But I would be conservative. I would go right at what he bought it at, 350, and then you're going to have to play the backwards game, right? The fix up. What what do you get for it? Um, and from there, let's take a look at this. Let's just say, you know what? There's some. Let me let me look at one thing real quick. Sorry, sorry, uh, Daniel. I want to look at these comps one more time. I want to see if there's anything, any neighbors over there that has sold for um, 400. Uh, okay, you've got some interesting ones. All right, you got some some big lots here. Ooh, what's this one for? Two? Oh, that was seventeen. What is this one at seven seventy five? Even if it was a long time ago, is it just something that's an anomaly? Uh, oh, okay, they built a subdivision. All right, <laughs> that's what they did. Yeah, and and the issue here is if it's a historic. Typically, you can't just bulldoze that house and build a um, build a subdivision. So that was the play on that one. And that's probably what he's saying is like, hey, the, the value's in the land. Uh, but I would still work it like the value was in the property. Um, I like that these other properties went for 260 that were 1,400 square feet. Yeah, I would say 350 max. I would say 350 max is where I'd want to be, right? So we'll get past my beautiful chart. So, Mike, you got the uh, calculator. You got it? Yep. All right. So first, let's get rid of what the profit is times 10% and times 6% for closing. This is the profit that somebody would be looking for, the flipper or investor would be looking for. And this is the uh, acquisition cost cost of buying it this is title and escrow this is real estate agent this is all those things that's what we build in what's that put us at Two hundred ninety four thousand. and by the way usually what i do is just put times this by this okay by 0.84 that's where that comes from what is it uh 294k ninety four thousand dollars now he's got 1600 square feet 17 1800 square feet it's in really rough condition right mm -hmm. So I would say that you would have an estimated fix-up budget in your market there. I would go higher. 
um, just because the cost of everything is getting higher and the cost of uh, labor is higher because people are starting to run out of their um, unemployment checks and getting back and things are starting to pick up and open up. Uh, Florida is a little bit faster, but whatever. So 60, I mean, you're, you're going to buy this thing at a significant, I mean, you're going to have to be at 234 is what your wholesale is. And then you want to be under that. So I would be, let's say you want to make 20,000 on this deal. So you got to be at 214 and he owes, he would have to come out of pocket, Solomon. Now, what I would do here is, and, and, and because this is a unique deal, Solomon, what I would do is I would talk to anybody that's done a flip in this zip code, 33033, okay? And I would say, hey, listen, I've got this unique property, totally fixed up, what do you think it goes for? And I, what I'm talking about is you call the, the listing agent, you call the real estate agent, I guess I don't need this anymore. No. You call the real estate agent um, on those properties, on those flips, and you see uh, what they think about it because there could be there could be a development play, there could be something where somebody wants to add properties to that, you know, or um, do something special with that, or maybe it's I don't think it's zone commercial, I think it's just single family, but uh, maybe there's a different play there, or maybe you sell it to that um, to that uh, that what looks like a farm uh, north of it. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of different things there that might get it there, but he owes, he owes uh, two hundred twenty-eight thousand. I mean, even if you get it at that, uh, it would be a six thousand uh, dollar deal for you. So, um, so, yeah. so, Brent, anytime you have a property that's super duper unique like this one, right, way outside the box. I mean, do you like always go talk to people, talk to agents, talk to you know in that area that that have a real good feel for it? Yeah. Always talk to the agents on those properties and um, just get somebody that has an idea because I could be totally off. He could be like, listen, that property there was owned by the former governor and it's got historical, per you know, who knows? Like it was owned by the inventor of the uh, thing that shakes olive trees. I don't know, whatever. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> really cool people out there in the world. So. Um, you want to see if there's anything unique about the property. And then also, if you're able to develop that land, that would be an interesting play as well. You saw one sold uh, years ago for 775. I don't know if you're able to because it's a historic property and it's probably uh, being preserved um, uh, by the planning and zoning department. If you like that video, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos every single day. And if you want your questions answered, like you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that you join us for the live show every single Wednesday. I will see you there.